Hello, friends. The 6-0 Ruby was released today, and if you saw my recent Best Paddles of 2023 video, you already know that it's become my new favorite paddle. So let's dive in and take a look at what makes the Ruby so special. The Ruby costs $199, and you can take 10% off with the code 10JohnQ. The Ruby has the same shape as 6-0's now iconic double black diamond. So it's a hybrid shape with a rounded top and a gentle flare going from the bottom to the top of the paddle face. The dimensions fall between a standard square paddle and an elongated paddle. And this shape just seems to be special in terms of the balance it gives for swing weight, sweet spot, power, and pop. The swing weight of the Ruby is 117, falling near the median in my database at the 56th percentile. So this strikes a good balance between hand speed and power. At this swing weight, the Ruby will feel the same as the Rhombus R1.16 and R1 Pulsar, the Volare Mach 1 Forza, and the Pickleball Apes Proline Energy S. The Ruby's twist weight is 6.81, falling at the 88th percentile. The twist weight correlates with the width of the sweet spot from side to side on the paddle, which is about right for this paddle, which seems to be very generous. To me, the sweet spot feels slightly larger than the original 6-0 double black diamond, which was already very large. The balance point for the Ruby, which is the paddle's center of mass as measured from the bottom of the handle, is 23.7 centimeters or 9.3 inches. This location falls at the 35th percentile on my database, which means that the paddle is more head light, which helps with maneuverability. The biggest thing to note about the technology and materials behind the Ruby is the use of Kevlar on the paddle face. Although Kevlar has been used for years in the core of different paddle brands, only a few companies have very recently released Kevlar faced paddles, Pickleball Apes being the main one. I've covered the unique properties of Kevlar in detail in my reviews of the Proline Energy Paddles from Apes, so I'll just hit the key points here. Kevlar has some special properties that make it very tough and impact resistant, as you would expect because it is used for bulletproof clothing. It also has better shock absorption than carbon fiber, so the end result is a paddle that's more impact resistant and absorbs vibrations better. Something that distinguishes the Ruby from other Kevlar-faced paddles is that it uses a 100% Kevlar cloth instead of a hybrid Kevlar carbon fiber cloth. Also, they're using premium DuPont Kevlar rather than generic materials. DuPont is an American company owned by Dow Chemicals, and as far as I know, is the most expensive fiber cloth currently used on paddles. It's unclear exactly what this translates to, but I do appreciate when paddle companies like 6-0 spend the extra money to use premium materials, and I suspect that it'll at least result in a more durable paddle. The texture on the face of the paddle is created with a peel ply, which I'm excited about because up to very recently, paddles that used woven fiber cloth surfaces have used a spray-on grit for texture, which wears down quicker than peel ply, or what's come to be known as raw texture. Zooming in under a microscope, you can see the texture over the top of the twill weave on the ruby, and zooming in further, you can see the peel ply embossing that's used for the texture. I'm also happy that 6-0 is using a new coarser peel ply design rather than the fine legacy style texture they switched to earlier this year. In my opinion, the coarse texture provides better spin and it seems to last longer than the finer peel ply. Another thing I'd like to mention here is that 6-0 has been working on the Ruby since February of this year, so they spent nearly 10 months doing R&D before releasing it. Apparently Kevlar is more difficult to work with than carbon fiber, and 6-0 took their time to make sure they got it right before releasing the Ruby. Okay, one more thing to mention about the technology behind this paddle. It's built using a thermoformed technology. So instead of just sandwiching everything and gluing it together, it's first assembled in a mold with a perimeter foam and a band of carbon fiber around the entire perimeter to hold everything together, and then subjected to heat and pressure during the curing process. This results in several performance perks that I'll discuss later. Six Zero has been at the forefront of ironing out production kinks with the thermoforming process to fix core corruption issues that were seen with delaminated paddles earlier this year. They started using a new paddle core supplier, and apparently they haven't had any returns due to delamination, disbonding, or core corruption with the new cores. 
There is a significant increase in power with the Ruby compared to the double black diamond. Average serve speed as measured with a radar gun is 55.6 miles per hour, placing it at the 81st percentile in my database. That's a big jump over the double black diamond, which falls at the 57th percentile. On the other hand, pop, as measured with punch volley speed, is lower, falling at the 47th percentile compared to the double black diamond's 70th percentile. What this means is that the ruby puts a lot of velocity on the ball with full swings, like serves, drives from the baseline, and overhead putaways, but plays softer at the kitchen so that shorter strokes, like dinks, punch volleys, and flicks, don't come off with as much velocity. My spin test results for the Ruby averaged 2271 RPM, placing it within the top tier spin category. So you can expect with the Ruby, great top spin, slice, and the ability to really shape the ball. So the Ruby has a rare combination of performance attributes that I haven't really seen in other paddles. It has really good power for shots that use full swings, but also a muted response for shorter swings like dinks, resets, and even speed ups and attacks at the kitchen. This combination of big power and muted pop by itself is not unique. You see it in other paddles like the original Apes Pro Line Energy, Carbon 1X, and the Hudef Viva Pro Gen 2. But what separates the Ruby from these other paddles is its hybrid shape, which provides better maneuverability with a reduced swing weight and lower balance point. So it plays like a power paddle from the baseline and a control paddle at the kitchen that also has good hand speed. Also, the sweet spot on the Ruby is wider than on elongated paddles, which definitely helps with the control game. The trade-off with good control on the Ruby is less pop, so you don't get the same ball velocity with speed ups or counters at the kitchen as you do with poppier paddles like the Gearbox Pro Power or the Electrum Stealth series. Something else that helps with control is the softer, more plush feel of the Kevlar surface cloth. To me, the Ruby doesn't feel quite as plush as the original Apes Pro Line Energy, but it's more plush than the Double Black Diamond. But I do want to give a warning here that the surface feel of a paddle, or the way it feels in terms of its stiffness or plushness, is still very subjective, and it'll vary from person to person. I've heard people who played with the Ruby for the first time that said it felt stiff. That's not my experience, but I think most people will agree that it feels softer than the Double Black Diamond. It's subtle, but noticeable to me. Another thing that helps with the Ruby's control game is its top tier spin. I got a lot of comments from people who noticed the ball dipping more aggressively with the Ruby. And it's something that I noticed too. Some of my shots that I thought were going out ended up landing a foot inside the baseline. To me, it feels like the ball gets more dwell time on the Kevlar fiber cloth, which helps grab the ball, giving it better spin. And there might be some truth to this because Kevlar is softer than carbon fiber. The Ruby is a fantastic choice for anyone looking for a paddle that strikes a great balance for the two main performance metrics, power and control. I'd put the Ruby squarely in the middle of the all-court paddle category. The paddle will respond to big swings with big power, but one of the best things about the Ruby is its good control, which comes from a combination of its muted pop, great spin, extra large sweet spot, and a less stiff feeling off the face. Also, this is just a great looking paddle with its red surface and white accents. Definitely a contender for one of the best looking paddles of the year. As I mentioned in my best of 2023 video, the Ruby has become my new favorite paddle lately, overtaking the Apes, which was my number one for the past several months. I'm also using the Gearbox Pro Power elongated paddle a lot, but the Ruby gets more playtime because it's a more well-rounded paddle that's good at nearly everything without veering too far in any particular direction like power or pop. I think the Ruby is a good upgrade to the Double Black Diamond if you're looking for more power from the baseline, fewer pop-ups at the kitchen, and a slightly larger sweet spot. That being said, the difference between the Ruby and the Double Black Diamond is subtle. It's not gonna hit you over the head or anything as being dramatically different, but I think this is what makes 6-0 Paddle so great. They strike a good balance between everything and don't suffer from trade-offs that happen when a paddle focuses mostly on one type of performance. If the Ruby fits the bill for you, you can take $20 off the price, bringing the total down to $180 by using the code 10JohnQ at checkout. 
And at this price, the Ruby is a really good deal. It uses some of the most expensive materials in its construction, plays great, looks great, and it's over $100 cheaper than the most expensive paddles on the market today. As always, thanks for watching and your likes and comments always help out this channel. And if you wanna see my top ranked paddles in six different categories, check out my two-part series here and here. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, I started a website and put all of my paddle metrics on a database that you can sort and search. There's also a ball database that compares the hardness, rebound, and other metrics for most of the ball brands out there. And you can subscribe to my newsletter to get early access information and some behind the scenes stuff. You can check all of that out at johncupickleball.com.